Hello, everybody. Welcome back. That was very dramatic. Welcome back to the channel where we talk about stuff. I guess it's going to be a bit of a dramatic video as well. Uh, the news the last couple of days has been kind of insane. It's not just me, right? So backwards and then forwards. Um, as I've said before in previous videos, I have made it a thing of mine to make sure to tell everyone uh, exactly uh, how much Bitcoin is moving, how much Bitcoin is being accumulated, uh, the amount of Bitcoin being purchased by companies or any kind of like public information that we get. I'm not like doing anyone's like personal information. It's all stuff that we've known for a very long time uh, that has been on the internet. What's really crazy is now that I believe people are finally starting to pay attention. Not that I was expecting like 9 million views on each of my videos and people being like, <gasps> now's the time to buy Bitcoin. It was just more of a, um, I expected before that these numbers would have jittered, rittered, whatever people, people would have taken notice. Um, and I think some people did, but a lot of times, as I've said before, I think the numbers become a little bit abstract where you hear that these purchases are happening but it doesn't really equate into maybe not your daily life, the things that you're doing. Or a lot of times, uh, people sometimes, I think, equate the Bitcoin numbers to like cash numbers in that. If you hear that someone has purchased 7,500 Bitcoin, I think the mind, for some, this is me personally, Not I don't do this, but I think many other people do. I think they equate it to something along the lines of, well, $7,500 were accumulated or 7,500 of this one thing that's infinite is accumulated. I think people haven't really gotten to the, I, the full idea of digital scarcity. I know a lot of you may understand it or think you completely get it. But when you talk about the full array of what it means for there to ever actually be 21 million coins, that's a, like it takes a lot for the mind to actually get. And this is why I think a lot of other coins that have like billions in their supply uh, sometimes get mm, treated a bit differently because I think it's, it's easier for people to understand and like to swallow that pill of billions as opposed to there just only being 21 million. I'm talking about this 21 million because it is very specific to what we're about to talk about. So, ow, when I punch myself, you know that there will ever only be 21 million Bitcoin. Got it. Cool. Uh, we are currently... I think around 19 million or so Bitcoin has been mined over this upcoming halving, the 2028 halving, and the 2032 halving. Uh, in layman's terms, it's about to get real because the amount of Bitcoin that's being created uh, will cut in half. Got it, halving. The other really interesting part is that when we have this halving in April, uh, Bitcoin is actually going to become one of the rarest assets on the planet, like ever, that we've ever had. So not only is Bitcoin breaking all these records, like in the last 15 years, Bitcoin is the best performing asset ever. Look it up. It is up by millions of percent, the best performing asset ever. And over the course of those 15 years, we've also had a bit of a doozy when it came to like adoption and people knowing what to do with their Bitcoin. So we know that uh, in, the, in, the, in the olden days, uh, when Bitcoin was first around, a lot of people didn't really take it seriously. There are countless stories of people who were running the program, were mining Bitcoin on their computer. They just forgot it. Like, I don't know how, I mean, I guess it normally, like if you play a video game, sometimes you get up and walk away. You're not really expecting the video game in-game currency to become like worth something and therefore make you a millionaire. So I guess it's kind of that same exact way. We have countless stories of people who were mining Bitcoin or bought Bitcoin somewhere and they had like 20,000 Bitcoin, 34,000 Bitcoin. They lost the computer. They lost the password. They can't get inside. They're locked off forever. Right? They threw away the laptop. You name it. It's all these different stories that are out there. So from that 21 million, it'll actually, so here, here, here's, here's numbers time. From the 21 million, it'll take us until the year 2140 
2140, it's a real number, to mine the last fragments of Bitcoin. It is going to take us another 115 or so years to be able to actually get there. We know that currently right now we have around 19 million Bitcoin that has been mined. So it's going to take a really long time to mine the last 1.52 million Bitcoin that's actually out there. Still with me? I really do hope so. The 19 million that we have right now, it has been guesstimated based off of inactive wallets, things that aren't moving, things that we haven't seen move for over the course of 10 years. And the, the, so the generalized idea is, I've heard people say before, well, if the Bitcoin hasn't moved for 10 years, how do you know it won't move later on? The idea is that, let's say I gave you, the camera cuts out, sorry. Let's say I gave you um, a pack of Pokemon cards I gave you 25 packs of Pokemon cards and a binder full of cards inside of it 15 years ago. It, and I gave it to you inside of a box. At some point, you're going to hear on the news that Pokemon cards have gotten far more expensive. So what are you going to do periodically every couple of years when you hear that these cards have risen in value? You're going to go check that box, but the box is like a little old. It's like a little moldy, you know, like it's getting older and older for some reason as time goes on, like computers do. And you start moving it from one box to another to secure it more. At some point, you're like flipping through the pages and you realize that everything is a first edition Charizard. And you're like, oh, this is worth a lot. Each of these Charizards is worth like five, six figures. So what do you do? You move them into a vault. That's the generalized idea as well. People assume that. If someone over the course of the last 10 to 15 years has purchased Bitcoin and they purchased it for five cents, <laughs> I know it hurts to hear that number, purchased it for like five cents all those years ago, at some point realizes that they're worth like $20, $25, they might buy a new computer and just move those coins onto it as, to, as the old computer at some point will become obsolete. They're clicking around on TV one day, they see that there's, you know, Bitcoin's price has risen to 12000 they go, ah, I have 30,000 of those. Maybe I should move them somewhere. And then they buy a brand newer computer that's only for that Bitcoin, but they've moved it constantly. The address, the address has been moved. We've seen as Bitcoin's price has risen that the coins have continuously moved. Bitcoin's price goes to 70,000. This person goes, ah, okay. And then they separate it into five different places. It goes to Coinbase and Kraken and all these like offshore accounts and yada yada. We see that the coins have moved as the price has risen. It is illogical to believe that someone who had $50 worth of Bitcoin, who now has $28 million worth of Bitcoin, would be like, I think it's fine on my iPhone too. I, I think it'll be okay there. I don't really know. We assume that it would have been moved. And these coins being unmoved, therefore we declare them like destroyed or gone or simply lost as no normal human would leave that amount of money on a laptop from 2007. Numbers. The 19 million, it is believed that 4 to 6 million are lost and gone forever, which roughly literally leaves us between 13 to 15 million Bitcoin that's actually still available and around for us. For 8 billion people, that's actually still available for everyone out there. The problem is, is that over the course of the last couple of years, we've heard a massive amount about accumulation. Companies who are buying, companies who are hoarding. And these are also stories from a couple of years ago that I think a lot of people forgot. You can find them. We heard in 2018, 19, 20, definitely before 2020. Yeah, that was before 2020. There were a lot of companies and um, individuals, very rich people, who were buying up massive amounts of Bitcoin and actually hiding them in mountains. Like, not like, you know... Here you go, like placing it into a rock. It was more like a, a bunker within a bunker within a bunker within a bunker. And that's what really used to get me back then is I used to, and I used to bring the news, same as I'm doing now, did like this kind of news. And I would tell people that like rich people have Bitcoin like in the mountains. And people were like, okay, that's a, sure, why not? Can we go? Can we leave now? Like that kind of situation. And I was like, no, like they really like... They were buying up so much because the expectation that rich people have is that at some point Bitcoin is going to be worth over a million dollars. So instead of keeping it on that old laptop from 2007, you secure it in a secure, 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 secure place. But that's also another conversation for another time. The long, the long story being is that I'm like always like waving my arms like this, but you can't see it. Maybe you see my body like fluctuating like that. Is that at some point we realize that all these 
people were buying up tons of Bitcoin. I started making videos telling people how much Bitcoin was moving around, but I don't think it really like enters the human mind as to exactly how much is being moved around. Remember the news that we had like a, literally a month ago about the ETF issuers and how much Bitcoin that they were buying. We had news that I think collectively all the ETF holders were holding 2,000 Bitcoin. And then it was, I think, 15,000, 45,000 Bitcoin. And then we had one that was 95,000. And I was like, boy, howdy, that's completely insane. If you missed one of the most recent videos, shame on you. Uh, we found out that BlackRock alone, alone by themselves, um, has over 100,000 Bitcoin. In four weeks, this one company accumulated 100,000 Bitcoin. And my really crazy thing was that I was like, if that's what they did in four weeks, imagine what they'll do in 16 weeks. Imagine, a imagine after the halving. Imagine by like this upcoming October, how many Bitcoin they're going to have. It boggles the mind. And then other news came out and I was like, it's like a really weird Twilight Zone kind of thing because it does, it does, it does essentially feel like an I told you so kind of moment where I've been telling you for a long time that all this Bitcoin is being accumulated. And what, what we're currently witnessing in the market is that you, you've seen, you've seen the prices, have you not? Prices have been moving. It's because of the supply crunch. Any buying pressure is going to begin to move the price up. The issue is, is that as long as these ETF companies and other rich people around the world who've been buying since like 2014 continue to buy, and there's someone else who buys like several million dollars of Bitcoin, it's going to have an influence on the price. At a certain point, there's a psychological level that also gets the public. So the public ends up seeing Bitcoin was at 17,000. It was just at 22,000. It's at, it's at, it's at 34,000. Should I be buying? And the people end up buying. People end up buying more. And as we get closer to the previous all-time high, I have to sneeze. It's driving me crazy. Oh, boy. <coughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> it was like building up for like a minute and it wouldn't go away. You know, like that really weird tickle. And I was like, I can get through this. I can do this. As the price continues mounting and going higher and higher, by the time we end up getting to the previous all-time high, it goes a little insane because everyone then remembers collectively the public, the people who aren't in the market, that they could have been buying the entire time and the FOMO really takes over the entire market. The numbers are, we have just heard, while BlackRock has 100,000 Bitcoin, the ETF issuers themselves collectively, all of them together, now hold, where's the exact number? Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. There we go. In one month, four weeks, the nine ETF issuers are now holding 216,309 Bitcoin. Why is, it, why is this number significant? Why is, why is this number? Yeah, because if you did just... Just 210,000, and you did 100% from the 1% that it is, you would realize that the ETF issuers now hold more than 1% of all Bitcoin that there could or would ever be. That's off the number of 21 million, they hold 210,000, and let us not forget about the 4 to 6 million Bitcoin that are lost and gone forever. The nine ETF issuers now hold more than two, two something percent of all the Bitcoin that's actually out there. One month. What happens by the end of March? There's a, um, I, think, I think it was either Tor de Meester or Michael van der Poppe, uh, who said that they think that by the end of March, they will probably have over 400,000 Bitcoin. That and I went, then, then I was like, wait, after March, there are definitely other months. And I was like, how much will they have by July? Imagine if this pace is kept up. How many Bitcoin are the nine ETF issuers? They have 200,000 in one month. Now, let's even say in, in, in five months, the number would be over a million. 
let's back it up. Let's say that the accumulation even slows down a bit. That would still give them, by the end of this year, they would have more than 1 million Bitcoin. Now, as I said in the other video, here's the really weird part about ETFs is that ETFs, especially ones that are doing really well, uh, they tend to continue. So as it's only been one month, we can only assume that this ETF, these ETFs are going to be around next year. So like next year, February, like we're still going to have these ETFs. And then the year after, and then the year after, and then the year after. How much Bitcoin will these companies just have within their ETFs? And that's not counting uh, cumulatively the other 100 million people who are in the market that go the entire range. So you have people who are collecting and buying Satoshis every single day. You have people who are buying weekly. You have people who are buying bi-weekly. You have a lot of people, I've seen people in the comment section saying that they're buying 300 a month. That adds up really fast if that happens across even just 10,000 people. Nonetheless, 100,000. Nonetheless, a million people. Imagine a million people buying $300 worth of Bitcoin every single month. Now imagine the ETF issuers. Now imagine MicroStrategy. As I keep mentioning, because I don't want people to forget it, Jack Dorsey said before, Jack Dorsey loves Bitcoin. Like he doesn't like it, like he loves it. Uh, he says that he maxes out. He has multiple apps where he buys Bitcoin across different platforms. He says he maxes out every single day exactly how much he's allowed to buy. If you've ever uh, done like full verification on any cryptocurrency website exchange, you know that the max amount usually per day ranges anywhere from like $50,000 to $500,000. He says he maxes it out every single day to buy the maximum amount of Bitcoin that he possibly can. These ETF issuers officially own more than 1% of all the Bitcoin that there could ever be. I think the world is changing and the only people who are realizing are probably you who've stayed this long to watch the rest of this video. The only people who are realizing it. It is expected if this level of accumulation continues that we are going to see brand new all-time highs this year, which is quite unorthodox because we don't usually see that until like the end of the halving year. That is to say like December. We would not then see until then the previous all-time high. And then the next year after is when we go, wow, look how high the price went. Crazy, right? That goes to, uh, in the old, back in 2016, 2017, Bitcoin's previous all-time high before that was 1,200. By the end of that 2016 year during the halving, I think Bitcoin's price was 1,000, maybe 1,100. It hadn't even gone past what it was before at the previous all-time high. And look at where we are now in price. Crazy, crazy times ahead. And I try to make sure that everyone remembers, like time continues, time will continue going forward. If this is where we are now, imagine in five years. Imagine as the halvings keep happening and Bitcoin becomes even rarer. Rarer. It's a weird word. Anyway, yeah, just thought I'd uh, spread the good news that um, uh, the whales are accumulating. And now we can see it publicly. And now you can see the numbers daily as well. Because I think that's what maybe got a lot of people before is that they, well, you, you, you'd hear the numbers, but it wouldn't really make a lot of sense. Do so you put it into the context of in one month, these people got 1% of all the Bitcoin. Do, do I need to extrapolate and say a year has 12 months? Imagine at the end of the year, if they have 12% of all Bitcoin. Imagine if by the end of 2025, they, they, they've continued this amount, and they have 24% of all Bitcoin. Don't forget that there are other ETFs around the world as well. There are other Bitcoin ETFs that exist in multiple other countries who are also accumulating as well, but their numbers aren't as insane as the US ones. So you might hear that another company just bought another 5,000 Bitcoin and you go, well, 5,000 is not 200K, and you forget that still gobbles away at the next 140 years of Bitcoin production for billions of people on the planet. How there are people out there without Bitcoin in their portfolio, I, I can't, I can't begin to imagine. I do sincerely hope that you've all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having a great day, morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and or supporting, and I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.